The next part of our detailed bathroom layout is adding interior elevations. In Archicad we do this with our interior elevation tool. Now this generates a view just like a section or an elevation, so theoretically we could just use the section or the elevation tool, but the interior elevation tool is slightly more helpful because it makes a marker that represents well. It also partially links all the drawings together, but in, in terms of what it represents, the way that it represents, it's exactly the same as the section and elevation markers. So once we've got the interior elevation tool, we have to choose which type do we want? Do we want a single marker? Do we want to create multiple markers based on, it's called staggered, but what we're really talking about is polygonal, so we can draw whatever shape we want. Do we want a rectangular or a rotated rectangular? Again, so it's very similar to the polyline tool or the line tool, they're all basically the same thing. Do we want to see infinite depth or do we want limited range? We don't really need to worry too much about limited range when we're talking about a interior elevation, so infinite depth is fine. And when we represent this, we want to represent it starting from the outside edge of our skin. So we want to see to the, in this case, the edge of the tile. So I'm going to draw a box which is defining my maximum view range, and then I'm going to bring that in until it's showing me where I want to view it from. What I don't want to do is to be cutting through elements. I don't want to cut through my vanity, through my bath, through my wall, through my toilet, or through my shower screen. So I'm going to bring in that cutting plane until it's in the middle. Now we can actually invert that. So we can see we can go beyond, and that's basically making it look even further inward. It doesn't really matter. As long as my cutting plane is not cutting through any of those major elements, that's all that I really care about. And once we click, we see that it actually doesn't create four individual markers. It creates one linked marker. Now that linked marker looks pretty good. So that's saying on page 5000 we're looking for drawings number 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now that's great if I only had elevations on. Now we already talked about the idea that I'm probably going to have two plans and four elevations. So I could either say that these plans are therefore drawing number 5 and 6 on this page or I might move them, or I need to go into my settings of my detailed bathroom plan and change the settings. So instead of saying this as one, two, three, four, I can change those numbers. So when we look through the settings, we have our marker display. So we can actually represent this individually if we want to, but I do like the linked marker. We have marker text and style. So we wanna make sure that we're working at a scale that is readable, so three millimeters is good for that. And then we can change the way that we define these. So we can change these to custom settings, or we can make these auto-defined settings. So if I was to change this to custom, rather than reference drawing, I can change the way that these are numbered to be one, two, three, four, or three, four, five, six, or however I want that to work. And so on. And so that's just saying to see this elevation, you want to refer to number three on that page. Now, that's created the reference, but what about the actual drawings? Where are they? Well, they're project maps. So it's created interior elevations under our project map. This is the name that it's currently given to this. So that name's not really clear. So we probably want to rename this instead of having a strange name. Let's call that instead bathroom interior elevations. Now that's changed the name of these as well, which makes that a little bit hard to read. So we might want to define these manually as well, if that's confusing and not clear with what we're trying to represent. 
So now we've created these views. We can open up each one of these views. So in terms of representation, we see that the first one was not number three. When we go back to understand how this works, we see that the first one is actually based on number six. So we might want to link these in terms of creating saved views. Let's go back to our interior views. And now we're going to save this under our detailed layouts. You can call it bathroom interior elevation. And we can say this is 06. Now that's a bit of a long name, which means we have to scroll in our save view nav navigator to view that. So that's not maybe not ideal. And so maybe we just change that something simpler so we can read it because the name isn't necessarily important so we could call it bath elev 06 just so I can read it all in one go if that helps my process and then we'll save each one of these as we go so 3 4 bath elev 04 Bath Elev zero three and finally number five. Now most of these are pretty good. We're looking we're cutting through the bath in this detail and we're cutting through the vanity in this detail. So we need to decide is that what we want to do? When I go back to my saved view, we see that there is a small gap between the vanity and the bath. So if I wanted to, I could actually grab this view and move it, and I can do the same with this one. So they're no longer cutting through the vanity in the bath, but viewing it in elevation only. So let's go back to these views. And, we're, and we can see we're now seeing the edge of the bathroom face instead of cutting through the bath face. If our bath is a manufactured item, so if I'm not designing the bath, I'm specifying the bath, there is no reason for me to show sectional information, except maybe if it's a bath that is sitting in a hob, and then I'm cutting a section through to represent how the bath sits in the hob. But if it's a freestanding bath, I don't need to do that. In terms of vanities, if that vanity is custom made joinery, then cutting a section through it, it's a great idea. So that way I'm explaining the structure and I can have a detail marker and explain it in more detail because a drawing at 1 to 25 is really not sufficient. And so I can reference it that way. But if the vanity cabinet is just again a manufactured item that I'm specifying, not designing, I, I again don't want to be cutting through it in section. I'm seeing too much information. So I want to tailor my views to represent what I'm trying to show as professionally, maybe as succinctly as possible. So we now have our saved views. We have a saved floor plan view, a saved reflected ceiling plan view, and we have saved interior elevations and we see that they're not perfect they're still missing a lot of information but they're already starting to represent our model and then we need to decide do we want to keep on adding more modeled information or do we want to or three-dimensional information might be another way of saying that or do we now just want to add two-dimensional information to add the rest of the detailing as required to make the bathroom represent the way that we want so we've got a choice